Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease that affects the brain and spinal cord. MS is caused by damage to the myelin sheath, the protective covering that surrounds a body's nerve cells. When this nerve covering is damaged, nerve signals slow down or stop. We don't know what exactly causes this to happen. The most common thought is that a virus and or gene defect are to blame. What is known, however, is the way the disease affects a person physically. Symptoms can include loss of balance, muscle spasms, and tremors. MS can also cause difficulty in walking, so much so that it can drastically alter a person's lifestyle. Ever since I had my son, I, my left leg, my foot drug, I had foot drop immediately, weakness on my left side. Um, I was a nurse, worked on my legs, wore a brace um, ever since then, um, and just thought, hmm, I'm getting worse, went to the doctor, hmm and just, you know, more weakness, more problems that gradually slipped in with the spasticity. I had some traveling numbness in my legs. One leg would be numb, the other leg would be numb. Um, and I have a softball size numb spot in my back that I didn't realize was there all the time because it's in a spot that you don't feel. But once I realized that it was there, um, it's there, it was there constantly. So I went through um, the neurologist, um, and they ultimately, it took them until 91 to, di to fully diagnose me. Um, they kept saying they thought it was a neurological glitch or was this or that, but they finally did a spinal tap in 91 and that confirmed that it was the MS. My right side shut down and part of it is, is my right foot, I got foot drop in. So when I'm walking, I can't lift my leg real good. Well, it's actually, uh, shortly after the, the delivery of my second child, I was 36 years old, um, I started noticing uh, progressive weakness in my right leg. Um, and then about six weeks after delivery, um, I really had no ability to lift my leg or maneuver my leg without some assistance. The first attack was in 2000, the second was in 2002. Um, the first attack, it took me six months but to come back, and I was totally walking unassisted at that time. And even after the second attack, for about two years, I was walking in, uh, pretty well okay. And then I started using a cane, and then it ended up two canes, and then a, a mobility device. Dr. Jonathan Naft is a certified prosthetist orthotist, and founder of Giaga Rehabilitation Engineering outside of Cleveland, Ohio. He is also an accomplished engineer. After years of designing brace systems for people with impaired mobility issues, Dr. Naft and his team began to think there might be a better way to serve his patients. What we noticed was, without regard to how much we brace and control their foot, we found that what we really needed to do was give them better ability to lift their leg to be able to give them hip flexion assistance. So in other words, we could brace a foot, but if the patient isn't able to advance their leg, we needed to do something to help them actually take a step. So after fitting literally hundreds of patients with diagnoses such as foot drop, we determined that something else was needed in the equation to help them lift their leg. So we after at least 25 iterations came up with the hip flexion assist device which has made tremendous enhancements to people's gait. Our normal day consists of designing and building custom braces which we have a tangible thing to start with. We have a cast or tracings, measurements. Um, we have something that we've dealt with in the past to, to start with. We have a starting block. This project came in with an idea and that's it nothing existing to deal with to start with and we basically had to brainstorm to say you know what we wanted you know the the end result to be and where we were going to start we had one goal in mind was to lift the leg and how do we accomplish that so it was it was really unique in that we didn't have anything to start with other than an idea that idea transformed into the hip flexing assist device or HFAD a low-cost solution that will dramatically improve the walking ability in some patients. Essentially what it does, it's a band that goes around your, your waist and hips 
then has rubber bands that are calibrated to a specific tension for the length of your leg and the weight of your leg. These bands run down inside your pants so that they are not visible and they connect to your foot or your shoe, which the tension on the bands provides flexion bending for your knee and it provides pickup of your foot. So the brace is helpful for drop foot and it's helpful for knee control. And it actually lifts my leg in the process. The um, motion, when you just triggered a little bit, the tension that's on it lifts the leg for a step and enables me to lift forward and, and walk in a, which I feel is a, is a pretty good pattern. I really didn't get it. I did not get it. Um, the concept of attaching a belt on my waist and attaching it on my foot and expecting the spring response, the concept was above me. But my husband was kind enough to put it in simple terms. He said, it's, it's kind of like a slingshot. So with that, um, just kind of um, better understood the concept. And once I understand what it, understood what it was doing for me, then I just made appropriate adjustments. And you know, once I understood the dynamics, it's worked. It's been very affordable. It hasn't uh, cost me. I mean, pennies on the dollar when you can think about daily things that you need um, to go through your day. The HFAD does indeed seem to work. Listening to patients tell their stories, it was apparent that the team at Geauga Rehabilitation Engineering had met their goal of making a product that provided a great deal of relief and yet was exceptionally low cost. Um, when we finally had workable devices and we put them on patients and we saw their their reaction was just, they were overwhelmed. You know, there were some, some patients were close to tears. It was the first time they were able to walk almost normal again compared to just, you know, being, um, being resigned to dragging their foot. I can walk farther. Um, I don't get as tired. Um, uh, and that's, for me, the basic thing. It, like I say, my leg was getting to the point where it just took a lot of energy for me to pick my leg up and walk, even though I wear an AFO, so I, w I don't have the toe problem. But, um, so that's, that's the benefit for me. Now my activities are pretty limited, but you know, it gets me around the house and gets me when I go out that I can still use a mobility device, walk into a restaurant and uh, not fall. Before it, I, my foot would hang up even with the AFO. Um, and, you know, I hit just any little incline or something and I'd be falling. So that's the reason for the stability of the rollator now. It was a godsend. I don't know why when I was in the hospital with the rehab, um, they didn't even know about it at the hospital I was in, that I felt that maybe I could have started a little bit earlier, I mean, when I fell in love with it. Um, yeah, the first time they put it on and my leg was like, woo, you know, sort of swinging back and forth, you know, and getting the um, bungees the exact, you know, tension that they needed. Then all of a sudden it's just like, a dream where like, oh wow, look, I'm walking. I mean, like I could like walk down the driveway. I'm like, hey, honey, look, I'm walking. And it was a great feeling. We asked Dr. Naff if he had any outside confirmation of his results. The HFAD was studied and tested at the Cleveland Clinic with patient trials. Patients were measured with their walking speed with the device and without the device. They were measured from sit to stand walking to a specific mark on the floor and returning to their chair. And they were also timed and studied over a calibrated obstacle course. The results of the study have been published in the Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. What I would say is you, you've got to make it work for you. Uh, I have learned to embrace my device, if you will. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've made uh, modifications in what I wear, but I wear it well, I think. Um, and just opening up uh, what your options are, what your possibilities are as far as um, functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. Embracing, embracing the, disease, the disease itself, first and foremost, um, and just coming to a reality as to what you're able to do when you're not able to do. And if there's a device out there that's reasonable, 
that will augment your everyday activities, why not take advantage of it? It's worked for me. I'm going six years strong, so uh, I love it. Yeah, it does definitely, though, help with fatigue. And that's a big part of MS to begin with. And even especially with heat and stuff, uh, it drags you down real quick. So it gives you extra time of being able to move with more ease. My husband and I are planning on going on a four week, you know, that dream Western trip, you know. And I, I started thinking, you know, it's gonna, our, our four week trip is gonna take us about three months if I can't move any faster than I'm moving. So, um, but I do, it, like I say, I don't get as fatigued and I don't get as tired. So that's the benefit that, that I was looking for. A lot of people look, a lot of people look, question, you know, and some of them are looking, you're like, hmm. You know, I'll share with anybody, if anybody else that needs this technology, it is out there and more people need to know. They really do. When, you, when you're in a hospital for almost a month and they don't have that technology there, you're like, geez, why didn't they know? And why wasn't I back up? I mean, you know, by the time I got back to Cleveland and, you know, had my, th you know, appointment with Matt and all that. And right. so it makes a big difference on energy. That's, that's the biggest thing, mm -hmm. energy and walking. I would say uh, I got my life back once I had this device placed and it was in full use. Uh, there was a time where I thought I would have to put my clinical career aside, that if the progression of my multiple sclerosis uh, were to continue on, um, I would have to look at other things, other alternatives, or a new career altogether. So this has given me uh, my life as I know it, back. To obtain an HFED, you would go to www.btm.com. Then the patient needs a prescription from their physician, and they should be seeing a physical therapist as well. Once started on the website, the website gives the patients a step-by-step -step instruction on how to obtain the device, which starts at the website. Try it. You'll love it. I mean, basically, if you don't try it, you'll never know. You know, I've had three braces, and this is one of the better ones, so. We want to stress that it's important to talk with your physician before using the HFAD. It may or may not be right for you.